Okay, remaining students, you also follow. It is about a convolution integral, and it is also the part of uh, third unit. Third unit, half of the part is Laplace transform, and half of the part is this convolution concept. Anyway, this convolution topic is uh, already in the PTSP also, we covered about this convolution. Uh, in this convolution topic, uh, usually after convolution, again we have this autocorrelation function, correlation topic. A correlation means again we are going to calculate autocorrelation, class correlation, and energy spectral density and power spectral density. The same topics are going to be repeated. It is like a redundancy. That's why. Uh, one second. That's why uh, in the la usually most of the time we don't have time to complete this topic. Uh, anyway, luckily we are going with now online classes. So this this word convolution uh, repeated repeatedly we are we know about this convolution. First of all, we see this convolution formula. Uh, it is entirely depends upon this impulse. You, I am representing this x of t means for our any signal x of t. I am writing here formula x of t is convolved with the impulse. X of t is convolved with delta of t. So if you write the convolution between x of t and delta of t, the formula is integral minus infinity infinity x of tau delta of t minus tau into d tau. Now you can also write delta of tau, x of t minus tau, d tau. So it is the convolution, if you apply the convolution between a signal, original sig any signal with impulse, usually that is going to be get the same signal. Uh, how we are going to see here the justification. You see here, there is a signal, x of t. Now, usually convolution means we need to find out the common area between these two signals. If you have some at this tau, uh, it has some amplitude. It has some amplitude. Okay. Now, the x of t is multiplied in the formula. We have x of t is delta of t minus tau. You know about delta function. Delta function is going to be exist only at particular sample. Now, this delta of t minus tau, where it is going to be exist only at time t equal to tau. Now, in this axis, we have a x of t. It is an amplitude and corresponding time. Whenever time t equal to tau, whenever time t equal to tau, this delta function is going to be 1. So, here, we are going to be get an impulse. It is an x of t. It is an x of t. Now, after multiplying, after multiplying x of t with impulse, that impulse is also delayed impulse. Where it is going to be exist at time t equal to Usually, suppose delta of t, it is at time t equal to 0. Now, it is a, this delta function is going to be delayed by tau times. So, at tau, where we have a, an impulse. So, this impulse is existing only at tau. What about remaining all this duration? There is no any information. So, it is entire thing is 0. The entire thing is 0. Like that, what about the tau limits here? What about the tau limits? It is from minus infinity to plus infinity. If we substitute all these, all these values, finally, we are going to get again our original signal. So that's why whenever, remember this statement, whenever any signal, any signal is convolved with an impulse, any signal is convolved with an impulse, we are going to get the same signal. Any signal is convolved with the impulse. We are going to get the same signal. Now, you see the derivation of a this convolution integral. Derivation. Now, you see a continuous time system. A continuous time system means we have seen about these LTA systems. Usually, it has an impulse response. Uh, usually, H of t. 
generally. Well, defaultly, we are choosing like that. Uh, the characteristics of the system is going to be given by this impulse response. Now, input is x of t, output is y of t. So, y of t is convolution of x of t with generally h of t so far we have gone to. Now, here, well, what is our idea is the signal x of t is processed through the system. The signal x of t is processed through the system. That's why we are writing y of t is equal to transformation of this t indicates here. This t indicates here transformation of x of t. What is this one? x of t. So, y of t is equal to transformation of x of t. Transformation means this signal is passing through the system. The signal is passing through the system. So, y of t is equal to transformation of this, this x of t. This x of t is going to be right x of t is going to be right minus infinity to plus infinity x of tau into delta of t minus tau into d tau transformation of integral uh, this is what is this x of t it is a formula convolution of x of t with delta of t convolution of x of t with delta of t formula now it is x of uh, whatever the y of t is transforming through the system we are representing y of t is equal to transformation of x of t so, this transformation we are going to be apply for an impulse, for an impulse. So, you see here, y of t, integral minus infinity, x of tau, because it is a time, uh, transformation of delta t minus tau, d tau. You remember, it is very important for an LTI system. LTI means linear and time invariant. The system satisfy both linearity and time invariant property then we can say that that system is a, a LTA system. So, most of the LTA systems are practical systems. Now, for this LTA system, our input is delta of t or delayed version of the. You don't confuse here delta of t or delta of t minus tau. Delta of t means the input is going to be applied at time t equal to 0. Delta of t minus tau means the input is going to be applied at time t equal to tau and delayed by some value. Tau is a constant. That is the thing. Now, if it is applied for an LTA system, input is an impulse. What is the output? Output is a H of t. It is also called impulse response. So, transformation of delta of t, you can write H of t. Transformation of delta of t minus tau, it is a H of t minus tau. So, in this formula, whatever we have a transformation of delta of t minus tau, we are going to be right H of t minus tau. It is possible only for an LTA system. It is possible only for an LTA system. Okay. Now, you see finally the formula y of t is equal to integral minus infinity plus infinity x of tau into h of t minus tau into d tau. We can also write this formula integral minus infinity infinity h of tau into x of t minus tau into d tau. This formula directly so far we have used for any LTA system. Uh, the input is a x of t the impulse response, the system is characterized by the impulse response, h of t. So, the convolution between x of t and h of t is nothing but ever y of t. So, y of t is equal to, it is, it is our final answer. So far, we are using this formula only. Okay. Now, uh, you also remember, convolution means whatever the previous discussion, the discussion is not necessary. Uh, for an LTA system, input is x of t, impulse response is h of t. The output is uh, integral minus infinity, infinity x of tau into h of t minus tau into d tau. It is the convolution between input and output. Uh, you again, I am repeating that word. Convolution means convolution means to find the common area between two signals. To find the common area between two types. So x of t convolution with h of t is nothing but integral minus infinity infinity x of tau into h of t minus t. Okay. So, what is the importance of convolution means? What is the importance of convolution means? Generally, the importance of convolution means to find the to find the common area between two signals. You see one example here. You see the one example. Uh, then you will get an idea. Uh, the impulse response of 
an LTA system is H of T. The impulse response of LTA system is H of T. That is given, H of T is given U of T. Determine the output of the system. If X of T, if input is X of T is E power minus A T, U of T. Here A is a greater than zero. A is a positive. So it is the given. For an LTA system, input is given and impulse response also given. We need to find out Y of T. Y of T means convolution between the two signals. So first of all, we know the formula. You write the formula. Here he has not given the formula. But you write down the formula. What is the formula? Y of t is equal to integral minus infinity infinity. Here he has given y of t is equal to integral minus infinity infinity x of tau into h of t minus tau d tau. So what does it mean? What does it mean? Now these are the these are the limits for tau. These are the limits for tau from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now we are going y of t means for different values of t. For different values of t, we are going to be c. Is there any is there any common area between the two signals? Is there any common area between the two signals? Okay. Is there any common area between the two signals? Okay. Now, first of all, we are going to be seeing at different values of time. We are going to see different values of time. At time t equal to zero, you observe that time t equal to zero. At time t equal to zero. A time t equal to zero. You see. Uh, is there any common area? Suppose if in this formula, if you substitute time t equal to zero, in this formula, if you substitute time t equal to zero, this formula, if you substitute time t equal to zero, what is the formula? Y of zero, x of tau, uh, h of minus tau, d tau. Okay. You see here, the formula is y of zero is equal to integral minus infinity x of tau h of minus tau. So, first of all, what is the given input you need to write? What is the given input? x of t is equal to e power minus a t u of t. x of t is equal to e power minus a t u of t. You know e power minus a t u of t means it is a exponentially decaying signal. Why we are considering it is positive side? Why we are considering it is positive side? It is starting from time t equal to 0 to infinity. So we know u of t is u of t is one from time t equal to zero to infinity. That's why it is the exponentially decaying signal. It is exponentially decaying signal. X of t is equal to e power minus a t into u of t. Next, what is the h of t has given in this formula? You see, what is the h of t? U of t. You know u of t. What is the u of t? U of t is equal to one for time t equal to time t is greater than or equal to zero. But here, in our formula, we have the label is like this. X of tau, H of minus tau. H of minus tau. So, instead of writing H of t, we are representing this signal into H of tau. Instead of using that variable t, we are changing that variable H of tau. Don't confuse here. Here it is a, here it is a X of tau. Already in the formula, X of tau. It is also H of t minus tau. Uh, we are going to, based on the t value, we are going to be shift whether it is positive side or it is negative side. So, both uh, original signal, x of t, and the given impulse response, h of t, both we are changing the variable from t to tau. So, you don't confuse here. It is a given input signal. Graphical, if you draw the graphical representation, then only it is very easy to convolve the signals in time domain. Okay. Compare with the discrete time. Somewhat the complex analysis is there in continuous time for evaluating this convolution. So you can you identify this one. It is the we are changing the variable instead of t, we are going with tau. That is the only change. And then in the whenever if you substitute time t equal to zero, if you observe, it is a h of minus tau. So what is the meaning of h of minus tau? We just we are going to be uh, time reversal. We, we can fold the Original, uh, original signal, whatever the signal we have, with respect to vertical axis, about the origin. About the origin means it is origin, it is vertical axis, just you fold. Suppose it is h of tau, if you fold like this, if you fold like this, it is a h of minus tau. So you see this one also. It is a x of tau, it is h of minus tau. Now by observing these two graphs, 
by observing these two graphs at time t equal to 0, is there any common area? Is there any common area? Is there any overlapping? Or you can see the word. Is there any common overlapping area? So there is no any common area. There is no any common area. That's why if we evaluate at time t equal to 0, so there is no any common area. There is no any overlapping area. Instead of calling it as a common area, you can call easily overlapping area. Is there any overlapping area? There is no any overlapping area. So it is a 0. O of 0. At O of 0, we are going to get 0. Next, if suppose you take time t is greater than 0. Time t is greater than 0. You see here, time t is greater than 0. So time t is greater than 0 means what? t is a positive. t is a positive. Again, coming for this formula. Coming for this formula. t is a positive. So as it is this formula. Now, if you already we have a h of minus 2. Already we have a h of minus 2. So you just take h of t minus tau. You take minus is a common. Minus is a common. Then you will get h of minus of tau minus t. You remember, h of minus is a common. Tau minus t. Okay. h of minus of tau minus t. So what does it mean? Already whatever the time reversal signal we have, the time reversal signal is, delay, is delayed by t times. Whatever the h of t minus tau, this signal, because already we, we the previous case we have drawn uh, time reversal signal. Now, here you take minus is a common. So, whenever if you take a minus is a common, what is your formula? H of minus of tau minus t. So, the time reversal signal is delayed by t times. Suppose t is a positive, it is delayed. t is a negative, it is advanced. So, that is the idea here. You just you remember this uh, statement, you will get a easy conclusion. So, for time t greater than 0, if you see the, you observe this one. We are not disturbing this input signal. We are not disturbing this input signal. But the previous first case, we have taken time t is 0. That's why there is no any common area. Whenever if you take time t greater than 0, you just simply see it is your h of minus tau. Whenever if you, uh, uh, we have a formula, t is a positive. Otherwise, suppose if you, you if you are not aware with this delayed advance, just whatever the graphical signal we have, for that graphical signal, wherever we have a point, for that point, simply you can add t. Simply you can add t. Suppose 0 for 0, if you add t, 0 plus t, somewhere t is a constant. Uh, you can substitute. It may be 1, it may be 2. T, because t, our condition is t is greater than 0. t is greater than 0 means you take that value from 0 to infinity, any value. So, suppose it may be 1 or it may be 2. For example, here he has taken somewhere t. He has not mentioned the t value. So, just whatever the 0, we can add for this 0 t. So, some positive value we are going to be get like this. Okay. Uh, it is same for if it is our signal, you just delayed by t times. If it is advanced, left side. It is delayed, right side. So, by seeing after this, there is a common area or overlapping. So, what is the common area? What is the overlapping limits here? What is the common area? Or what is the overlapping limits? The common area is from 0 to t. Somewhere it is t. What about this portion? In this portion, there is an input signal. But there is no, there is no any impulse response. Coming for, for entire negative portion, uh, the impulse response is existing, but there is no any input signal. There is no any input signal. So, the we are going to be right the limits for common area. We are going to be right the limits for common area or overlapping period. So, what is the overlapping period? 0 to t. So, that's why whenever time t greater than 0, the limits are changed from minus infinity to plus infinity to 0 to t. So, 0 to t remaining formula x of tau, it is as it is you write h of t minus tau. So, in this duration, what is the impulse response? It is 1. So, you don't bother about What is the input signal? e power minus a tau. So, that is we are going to be considered here. So, you see, we have t, 0 to t. What is the x of tau? e power minus a tau. What about this delayed signal? Delayed time reversal signal? It is going to be 1. You see, in this duration, in this limits, 0 to 1, what 0 to t. What is the amplitude? 1. Just you simply integrate this one. You know, Integration of e power minus a tau d tau, same e power minus a tau 
divide by minus a because we are doing integration with respect to tau and you substitute that corresponding limits. So you will get the final equation is uh, 1 by a into 1 minus e power minus a t for time t greater than 0. Okay. It is the y of t for time t greater than 0. What is the one more case? Always whenever we are evaluating uh, convolution means you need to concentrate three values. Time t equal to 0, time t greater than 0, time t less than 0. If you take time t less than 0, third case, if you take time t less than 0. I simply, I previously already told this time t is a negative now. Time t is a negative. So time t is a negative means what? Time t is a negative means this signal is going to be advanced. This signal is going to be advanced here. Or you simply add minus t. So suppose it is here. Is there any common area? Because of positivity, it is delayed here. Because of negativity, it is going to be advanced. Whatever we have a signal, it is somewhere. It is somewhere. So suppose if we see this signal is entirely right side. This signal is entirely negative because like R at, at time t equal to 0, uh, it is not, this, there is no any common area. Uh, for negative values of t also, there is no any common area. That's why for time t less than 0 is all is also a 0. Again, you see here, he has given clearly. It is our x of tau, but time t is a negative value. So you see here, time t is less than 0. So time t, it is a time t equal to 0. Time t less than 0. Time t greater than 0, this one. So, it just, you can see, by by seeing the, uh, whenever we are calculating this convolution, the better is, every time, you need to draw, you need to draw these graphs. Then only we can easily identify, is there any common area? Now, is there any overlapping period? You see here, is there any overlapping? There is no any overlapping. So, what is the y of t? 0. So, you see here, final conclusion, uh, result, y of t is equal to, uh, for time t equal to 0, in a way it is a 0. For time t less than 0, in a way it is 0. Even if you see, if you substitute time t equal to 0, that's why he has given time t get or equal to 0. Time t equal to 0, e power minus 0 is 1, 1 minus 1, 0. So, for time t less than 0, in a way it is a 0. For time t greater than 0, for time t greater than 0, already we have evaluated that is going to be right. So, whenever whenever uh, whenever we are going to be we are going to be convolve a exponentially decaying signal with a unit step signal, the convolution formula is it is like this a exponentially increasing signal. Okay, it is the one problem on convolution. Okay. Similarly, you can do you take any problem you take any problem if you see if you do the similar fashion we are going to find out easily this uh, convolution it is the convolution topic in continuous time we are going to see one more problem in discrete time instead of seeing this continuous continuous time uh, one more problem it is also in discrete time. these are all are in continuous time you better go through this already i uh, i uploaded this book also you go through that book and is there any problem at any time you ask me about this uh, evaluation of integral uh, because of uh, we don't have time that's why i will show one more problem on discrete one more problem on discrete so all these are all are continuous these are all are continuous problems many number of problems are available in this book you just go through that one all problems are not necessary one or two problems you go through that if you you must know how we are going to be evaluate a convolution, okay? How we are going to be evaluate convolution. Now, coming for convolution sum, instead of calling convolution integral, we are going to be called, it is a convolution sum because uh, it is in discrete time. It is in discrete time. You see, what is the difference between continuous time and discrete time? The formula is same. The formula is same. We are just replacing uh, integration with summation. You see the sequence, discrete time sequence, whatever the sequence he has given. Suppose you see 2, 1, 3, minus 2, 1. Already in the jet transform, whenever I have discussed with the jet transform, at that time I discussed this arrow would indicates x of 0. It is x of 1. It is x of 2. It is x of minus 1. It is x of minus 2. Now you draw this graphical representation. You draw the 
graph will represent x of 0 what is the amplitude x of n is equal to n equal to 0 what is the amplitude 3 n equal to 1 what is the amplitude minus 2 n equal to 2 what is the amplitude 1 n equal to minus 1 what is the amplitude 1 n equal to minus 2 what is the amplitude 2 so after drawing this graphical representation after drawing this graphical representation uh, we can for any signal uh, we are going to see what is the common common samples what is the common sample the theory is also similar fashion previously we have represented there is a delta of t now instead of delta of t we are going to be represent here delta of n so it is also unit impulse there we can call it is a impulse direct delta function here we are going to be call it is a unit sample unit sample so delta of n you know by many number of times we discussed about this delta of n it is a 1 for n equal to 0 it is 0 for n not equal to 0 next suppose it is delayed by 1 delayed by 1 so it is n equal to it is 1 at n equal to 1 suppose it is advanced it is 1 at n equal to minus 1 if you want to draw all these uh, samples graphically you can you can draw then only you can get better idea what is the impulse what is the delayed impulse what is the advanced impulse okay okay now uh, you see it is a delta of n minus k delta of n minus k means at n equal to k only at n equal to k k that is our choice you may take one you may take two you may take three you may take n equal k equal to minus one you may take k equal to minus two k equal to minus three so depends upon the k here k is a constant depends upon the k value you are going to get you are going to get any value you are going to get any value k suppose for example he has taken here k equal to two k equal to two delta of n minus two so it is delayed by two times so delta function is going to be exist at n equal to two or n equal to k or n equal to two okay so it is the importance of impulse it is the importance of impulse for uh, calculating this convolution formula okay the same concept x of n how we are going to be obtained x of n there it is the integration here it is a summation so finally we are going to be observe the convolution formula uh, y of n it is not x of n here uh, it, whenever it is a delta of n minus k it is x of n whenever it is a y of n y of n it is going to be right h of n minus k okay now you see this formula final formula the transformation all this thing okay ah you see it is your final convolution formula it is also already we have seen in uh, discrete uh, dtft uh, properties also we have seen in the jet transform uh, concept uh, whenever we are ta talking about the stability of the system also we have seen this formula in uh, discrete time convolution formula you see that formula y of n is equal to summation of k equal to minus infinity infinity x of k h of n minus k what is the difference between this uh, convolution integral and convolution sum there is a integration here there is a summation there is a tau we are, go we are going to do the integration with respect to tau here we are writing this de delayed version or advanced version whether it is an input sequence or impulse response it is with some variable k we are taking okay so uh, it is the formula of convolution in discrete time the computation is also same like previous case here there is a three types of methods one is a graphical method yeah this graphical method somewhat takes more time another one is a multiplication method another one is a tabulation method simply for your understanding uh, i am going to say this uh, tabulation method uh, this tabulation method then we will see if we have time we are going to see this uh, one more thing is this uh, it is important how can you write this limits k limits k limits also very important for selecting this k limits also important here uh, instead of doing all this thing it is another method multiplication method uh, compare with this one also it is very easy method you just simply you observe here you observe here uh, we are going to be uh, write the samples suppose we have samples are like this x of n samples and it is a h of n samples you just write the samples value and just suppose 
you multiply suppose it is a x of minus 2 you multiply this row with all the columns next x of minus 1 you multiply with all the columns like that we are going to multiply and you take these diagonals first diagonal second diagonal third diagonal fourth diagonal fifth diagonal sixth diagonal and I add these diagonal elements we can easily obtain this convolution formula you see you see for this example we will see we are going to see the given formula given problem is you see here uh, suppose it is x of n x of n data is 1 1 0 1 1 uh, whatever the given problem that problem we are going to see once again it is our problem you see this problem uh, it is a x of n is equal to 1 1 0 1 1 Again, I am going to say this is a your starting sequence. It is start our origin sequence 0 and it is minus 1, it is minus 2, it is 1, it is 2. And coming for this, it is a 0, it is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So, starting sequence is here minus 2, starting sequence is here minus 3. So, that is why you see here, you, know, you clearly notice here. What is the x of minus 2? 1. What is the x of minus 1? 1. What is the x of 0? 0. What is the x of 1? 1. What is the x of 2? 1. So, it is about, it is about uh, representation. The arrow indicates 0. Now, here also, it is h of minus 3, 1, h of minus 2, minus 2, h of minus 1, minus 3, h of 0, 4. Okay. So, like this, we are going to write first this. Then, simply, Simply, uh, what is the, the, it is also important. What is the lowest index of x of n? What is the lowest index of h of n? What is the lowest index here in this? What is the lowest index? Minus 2. In the h of x, h of n, what is the lowest index? Minus 3. The starting one, it is going to be summation of these two. So, it is important. So, output for output, the starting sequence, minus 2 plus minus 3, we are going to get minus 5. Minus 2 plus minus 3, minus 5. Okay. So, next, now, you see, you just, you don't confuse, you just place whatever the x of n samples, whatever the h of n samples here. Now, 